Hello and welcome to another episode of Cloud Stories, the podcast where we explore stories from the accounting and business apps community. I'm your host, Heather Smith, and today I'm thrilled to bring you an interview with Paul Dunn, the fourth and final interview in our series of interviews from the Accountants Bootcamp. If you haven't already, I recommend you listen to the previous three episodes and subscribe to the podcast. When I first heard about the reboot of the Accountants Bootcamp, I was intrigued by the opportunity to see Paul Dunn in action. I've heard so many good things about him from so many people. I was, of course, concerned that he could not possibly live up to the hype, but he was all that and more. He started in the industry in the early 70s, and at the reboot event, he was extraordinarily sharp, energetic, and charismatic. He made everyone in the room feel like a VIP, and I watched him take time out to speak with everyone. It was amazing. I don't even have that sort of energy level. So I was extraordinarily grateful for the opportunity to speak with um, Paul Dunn, and I think I've really saved the best interview for, for last, and I really hope that you enjoy it as much as I did. But before I introduce today's interview, I'd like to remind you of some ways to stay up to date with the accounting tech space. You can join the Zero Mastermind Facebook group, subscribe to the Accounting Apps newsletter at heathersmithau.com and subscribe to the Cloud Stories podcast right now. So also, I encourage you to connect with me, Heather Smith, on LinkedIn. Now let's get to today's episode where I'm joined by Paul Dunn, Chief Storyteller at Clarity and co-founder of B1G1. Hello, Paul Dunn. Welcome Hello, to- Heather. <laughs> Welcome to the Cloud Stories podcast. I'm absolutely delighted to um, be able to interview you today. Can you share with our listeners who you are and where you're from? Well, I certainly can. And first of all, I can also thank you for listening and also thank you for inviting me because it's been forever, right? And so it's a real privilege to be here. So as Heather said, my name is Paul Dunn. I currently do a number of things, but I guess the thing that I'm currently most known for is the founding of an entity called B1G1. And what B1G1 does is it adds or it allows you to make more impact as a firm or more impact as a human being, both on your business and on our world. So, for example, uh, just to link this to tech, what I do, we're going this way, that way? Yeah, because there's a little <laughs> so, alarm going on okay. over there. <laughs> okay. So what I do, uh, Heather, is just a very simple example. Um, every time someone is on a Zoom call with me, and by the way, all of our members around the world do similar things to this. So every time someone's on a Zoom call, um, I make sure something great happens. So, for example, typically I might make sure that five kids uh, in need get access to education, game-changing education at that, just because you and I are on a Zoom call. So for the first time, what happens is B1G1 makes it possible to link all the things you're doing technically to doing great things in the world and doing that automatically. So, for example, you know, it could be every time someone, you use Ignition or something like that, you, you use, you know, a client accepts your, uh, your plan and then, bang, something nice could happen as a result of that, where the client could be involved as well. Absolutely. And I know a number of uh, accountants and, and people in the accounting community are active members, such as Wayne Schmidt, um, I yeah. think Natalie <laughs> Lennon, yeah. um, and Ainsley Damery. Yep, there, there's, a, there's a few. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's great to be able to, um, accountants and bookkeepers are very generous um, people and uh, great to have a method of um, um, just continuing to support the community with yeah. um, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, native stingless beehive nearby. <laughs> I'm not sure where that is. I went for a walk this morning with Graham and uh, we passed a few things and he kept talking about snakes. He was very worried about yeah. snakes. But stingless bees, we shouldn't be worried about them. That's very good for our environment. And by the way, I think, exactly. And by the way, the bee is very important in B1G1, as in the bee itself, you know, just landing and giving pollen back and all that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, but I think from a technology point of view and, um, you know, there's some... Some people think of technology as like the silver bullet for things. I think more and more we're understanding that the, the technology is an enabler of more human things that we can do, if that, if that makes sense. Um, so, uh, the, uh, the, 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 in other words, it gives us more freedom to become human. Yeah, absolutely. And, and definitely um, it's an enabler. 
um, and it uh, sort of puts it formalizes processes for some people to yeah. um, enable them to scale if that's what they wish to do or, or, or um, free up their time to do other things, whatever they, they wish to do. Exactly. And I think the other thing it does as well, it gives, it gives people, and particularly customers, but, but also you yourself, it gives you structure. And when you have or exhibit structure, what actually happens is the level of trust rises significantly between you and the people that you're privileged to serve. So, yeah, it's, it's a really great combination. Mm. So one of the things that I would say that you're extraordinarily skilled at yes. um, is what I would term or coin the phrase of edutainment, which is <laughs> <laughs> you're an educator, but you're extraordinarily um, entertaining and very personable. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So You can come again. <laughs> <laughs> so why is that important and, and what thought process. How do you go about preparing, say we're here at the Accountants Boot Camp, how do you go about preparing, getting that energy together and, and sort of um, um, hyping up that room? Uh, it's an interesting question and also thank you for the compliment. <laughs> so so for me, uh, this is going to sound like a little bit woo-woo, but it, it it's actually happens. So for me, to be in front of a group of people who you could move well it's, it's like your podcast right in the sense right because people are going to listen to not necessarily this one but all of the ones you do and and as a result some of them are going to be moved in a way that they would not have been had they not listened yeah and so if you imagine then the presenter who gets up on stage and you come from this position of what a privilege this is to be here and interestingly i went through a uh, a sort of a metamorphosis um a friend of mine well a former friend of mine, in as much as he's no longer with us, is, is a guy called Ron Tacky. And Ron once said to me, he's regarded as the godfather of speaking in, in this country. Which way are you going? Are this you able, able to go down there? Yeah, of course I am. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so he said to me, uh, Paul, he said, do you ever get nervous when you, when you speak? And I said, uh, well, yeah, I do, actually. He said, great, that's a blessing. He said, that's a blessing. And I said, why is it a blessing? Actually, what he said was, do you ever get butterflies? And I said, yes, I do. He said, the trick is to get the butterflies flying in formation. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love that thought. And so then uh, what, I, what I did, I just say to myself, you, if you watch me at the back of the room, for example, before I get introduced, I, I will be saying something to myself, right? and I'll typically a spoon or some reflective surface so that I can look at it. And for years and years and years, more years than I can remember, I used to say for them for them for them for them for them in other words to get it off myself does that make sense yeah, and, and then you know and get it on them and then i saw a program which i think was produced uh, one rainy day in singapore where i live now and uh, sometimes we have rainy days and it was from the norwegian government and it talked about diversity and it was an incredible thing and <laughs> we nearly got run over an incredible thing and uh, so what I realized, and this was like four years ago, I realized by the mere act of me saying for them was actually putting me apart from them. Ah, Does that make sense? Yes. So now what I've, what I've said every day since then is this little thing goes in my head and I go for us, for us, for us, for us, yeah. as opposed to for them, for them, for them. And that just gets me... It, it makes us kind of moving more together, if, if that makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. And one of the things I noticed that you do is um, you take the time before the session to meet numerous people, and yes. then while the session is actually running, you um, um, talk back to them. Yeah. And and you 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 you've managed to um, uh, recoil a lot of names as well. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and that that's well. First of all, I think people are fundamentally interesting. Um, and yeah, it just helps you get some connection. In fact, when you think about it, whether you're up on stage or you're pitching to investors or whatever it is, like in the tech space, fundamentally it's about connection. That's yeah. what we need to do. And so what is the way to connect? Uh, the, 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 way, the way to connect, thank you. The way to connect is to be much more focused on them than on you, if, if that makes sense. Yes. And so, Traditionally, you know, we go into the pitch and all that sort of stuff. And most pitches, I don't like that term, by the way, but no. most pitches, uh, you know, they, 
I, I, by the way, talking of pitches, I remember meeting with Rod Drury. Oh, yes. In 2000 and when was it? Two, uh, 2010. Yes. And, of course, Zero, as you know, was started in mm. 2008. Yes. Uh, with Rod and Hamish and all those guys. Right? And I was sort of semi-involved in that. Mm-hmm. And so Rod says, I'm down there visiting in Wellington. And he says, would you like a cup of coffee? And I said, sure, I'd love a cup of coffee. Are you going to turn around and go this way? Yeah, sure. Sure, I'd love a cup of coffee. So we go to this little thing near the Zero office. And is this in New Zealand? This is in Wellington, yes. yeah. And he says, by the way, did I ever tell you about how we started? And I said, well, no. And he then talked about their why and about beautiful accounting software and all that kind of stuff as it was back then. And he said... Um, and you've always got to be somewhere, he said. And so I realized very early that if I was to really make this as big as I thought it could be, to serve more people and to make a bigger difference, these are literally his words, right? Then I realized that I needed to go somewhere. I needed to be in the center of it. And so where would I go? I go to Silicon Valley. Mm. And I decide that what I'm going to do, I'm going to visit some VCs. So he said, can I tell you about what happened when I visited Peter Thiel, right? So he of Playboy and Extreme Right and, and all that and, kind of stuff. And PayPal and um, a number and of... And PayPal, yeah, yeah exactly, in the PayPal yes. mafia and all that sort of stuff. And so he said, I did this pitch to him and he said, it was amazing. He said, five minutes in, Thiel reaches into his right-hand drawer and he pulls out... I'm not sure whether they could, they could pull out a gun, couldn't they? But he didn't. He pulls out his checkbook and he puts the checkbook on the table and he says, in, in, in effect, interrupting Rod, yeah. and says, would 72 million do it? <gasps> I go, <laughs> Far out. Right? And, wow. and here's the other important thing about that is it probably would not have happened on a Zoom call if we could have done You know, you've got, yeah. to, you've got to be there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And... and, and um, Rod Drury is, was always such, or well, is still, and such an amazing presence. Is, isn't he? He's got great presence. He really and, has. And I feel so um, grateful um, for, for those of us who kind of were there in the early days who got those, um, those magic meetings like, oh. like you did. For, um, so I'm really appreciative of you um, sharing that story with us. The, um, I know that uh, Peter Thiel is um, quite a controversial um, character. Yeah. And um, I've seen um, Rod talk about it on Twitter and one of the things he said was look you know some people attacked because of uh, Peter's um, sense of values etc but Rod came back and said he introduced us to a lot of great people yeah. Yeah, yeah. and you know when you when you're working the room and trying to do something things things um, you sometimes need to uh, work with extremes yeah, but you do you do you do you do and and and, and sadly there's a whole lot of stuff that goes on now, as you know, because you're right and I'm wrong and, mm. you know, the, all of that sort of stuff. But the reality is we're human and, and we, we must, I think, learn from having these different opinions and yeah. saying it's okay, right? And uh, <laughs> I'm not going to fight you on it, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. But, but <laughs> I hope I'm going to learn from it. But increasingly we seem to be moving more towards I'm going to fight you on it. Yeah, and, and, and that is a shame. But I do think that there is great value in... Knowing people with different perspectives, yeah. um, knowing people from different cultures, etc., and that's one of the reasons I think it's so good to for people who've come out here to Australia to do this um, boot camp, yeah. but also for um, um, for me when I sort of travel and go we can go that way there, yeah, go to go various places, um, to 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 conferences overseas. So one of the one of your other roles, <laughs> of the many hats that you wear, mm. is that you're the chief storyteller with um, clarity. Yeah, yeah. I love that, and we are constantly telling people to tell stories. Yeah. What does that mean to you? Well, I think, yeah, stories. Well, you may recall I, I kind of uh, hinted at what happened when I really got that, and I got an email which said. Um, and I got it from a lady called Bernadette, um, Bernadette Jiwa, who, oh, by the I way, know you, know, you know Bernadette, yeah. right? she now conducts classes in yes. storytelling and so on. And, um, so, and she's written some brilliant books about what you and I are talking about now. Anyway, um, so she writes me an email, and the subject line in the email is, the storyteller is the most powerful person in the world. Mm. And I looked at that, and I, it's one of the, you know, sometimes you get an email and you... you 
you just have to click you have to click and so i clicked and i'll tell you what happened after i clicked well in fact i saw who said that line and it was steve jobs and, and steve in 1994 when he was uh, he left apple or to give you the official line uh, he he resigned but anyway yeah, so here he is at pixar right? and he says the storyteller sets the vision the values and the agenda for an entire generation yet to come. Yeah, absolutely. And the critical line in that is for an entire generation yet to come. So when you, and by the way, the reason that I clicked on that email and the reason that it's so powerful is when you think about it, the word story is in our DNA. Mm. You know, granddad put us on a knee and said once upon a time. So when you can, when you can put the word in the email, you will in fact get a bigger open rate. Seriously, you will. Yeah. And I know that because yeah. that day I wrote an email that had that in the subject line and the boom. The, you find someone to sit in yeah, there. Yeah, and it just, just, yeah, sure. And it just kind of went, well, not exactly viral, but it got much bigger open rates than anything I'd ever written. Yes. So, and that gets back to the story that we tell in tech. And one of, the, one of the issues that I think we have in tech is that we get so excited with the stuff. Okay, you know, we, yeah, okay. we get so excited by it does this, it does this, you know, look at this feature, look at this feature, look at this feature. And we forget that it's not about the inputs. It's never about the inputs. The only reason that I'm going to buy what it is you have is because in some way it gives me an outcome that I'm looking for. And outcomes are the key, but so often you see these pitches which are just boring. Do you want to sit here for a sec? These boring, boring, boring things which are talking about, oh, well, we do this and we do this. Oh, by the way, have you noticed this and have you noticed that? Whereas what we could talk about is the outcomes, the potential that you have through using this technology. And the moment we focus on outcomes rather than inputs, that's a, that's a fascinating change. And the way to do that is to be able to tell stories that are relevant to people sitting right there alongside you and talk about how that is transforming their experience of life, their experience of business and so on. Yeah, absolutely. And it's a, it's a message that we're, we're talking to the um, accounting and the bookkeeping industry about in terms of they have the hard, dry numbers, which we hope are accurate and timely, um, but we can sort of tell them the stories or the scenarios, the possibilities the risk options that they can take with what they can do with their business. Uh, yeah, and it's also, it's interesting, just, just in recent, uh, recent uh, well, actually in recent last two years, uh, you, you, you may be aware of a company that exists here on the, on the coast, or at least is based here. Um, they're incredible. They're hiring 200 people a month right now. <laughs> and they, are, they were previously known as, well, they still are in a way, they're known as TOA. So they, this is Nick Sinclair and the guys who do, you know, the outsourced accountant. And I did a session with them a couple of years ago and speaking with Craig Mansell, who's the CEO, as you know, and Craig said, oh, Paul, you can't tell anybody about this at that time. But he said, we've realized something in tech. He said, what we've realized is with all the people we have in the Philippines or in South Africa or wherever they are, that fundamentally, this is, a, this is not a B2B thing. This is a human-to-human -human thing. Sage realized exactly the same thing, by the way. And so he said, we're actually creating a new group. And we are, we are writing tech now, taking, trying to take even more care of the people that are there. So we're concerned with their mental health, all of that kind of stuff. And so we were trying to figure out a name for this thing. And uh, it was a little, a few months after Mr. Zuckerberg had uh, determined the, the metaverse thing. And so Craig decided they would call it the human verse. And, and I, I love that mm. phraseology, right? Because yeah. you, 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 all of a sudden, just because you're there, you're, you're not concerned, well, you are concerned with the tech and making it great. But what are you making it great for? To provide better outcomes for the humans in that in that process? Yeah, and 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 like I know, Tower Global have got multiple offices in the Philippines, and it's a big deal. The wellness areas, um, 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 sick bays, um, yeah, and, and, and um, activities through the month, through the year for the people. It's not just turning up, processing, leaving, turning no. up. It's, there's there's a lot. They 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 
try and make it a really holistic experience. Yeah, and and I've got to say, uh, you know, both Nick and Craig. I mean, if there was, uh, if there if there was, you know, a cyclone or whatever they call them in the Philippines oh, today, so many, yeah, I, typhoons. I, I, and cyclones. I know that they would be on a plane now. Yeah, I know they would, right? And so it's that. Uh, this is not a showy thing. This is who they are, and then finding ways of expressing that humanity, that humanity through the power of the technology that they work with. Yeah. So, can I sort of circle back to your early days? What is your very first memory of an accountant? Oh my God! Actually, I was I, my whole. You know, I'm supposed to have this kind of story which says, "Oh, you know, life was tough," and all of a sudden, I, 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 I what do they call it? The hero story. You know, the hero journey. And and I, I, I think I'm deficient in that because I just see my life as one of incredible luck. So, for example, here I am, 21 years old, and and I get headhunted by HP, and, and in so I was in the United Kingdom, and I become one of the first 10 in Hewlett Packard way, way back then. And I'm literally sitting down and having breakfast with Bill Hewlett and Dave. I mean, it's, it's, I, can you imagine just how amazing that would be? And so I remember we, we my, you asked about my first experience. So, so we had just moved offices and uh, in, uh, in Melbourne. And uh, so the, the furniture wasn't in store, but there was a phone line. And I am like really crazy about answering phones. I, I really want to get there, right? So the phone rings, and it's, it's, it's not even on a desk. It's on the floor, right? So I pick this thing up, and I say, good morning, Hewlett Packard. This is Paul Dunn. And the guy on the other end says, oh, hello, Paul. My name's Brian Capon. And he says, I'm an accountant in, on the Mornington Peninsula, as I recall. Or in Mornington. So Mornington's there somewhere. And he said, more and more of my clients seem to be using, this is in, you know, this is when in the days of the punch card almost, you know, the magnetic letters and all that. And he said, a lot of my clients, they're surveyors, and they're using some of this Hewlett Packard gear. This is before Hewlett Packard had, you know, the, the, 30, the HP 35 and calculators and the 2116. It's in just before those days. And uh, yeah, we're almost simultaneous to those days. And he said, uh, so I'm an accountant, and I'm just wondering if this Hewlett Packard stuff can do what accountants do. And I said, Brian, the answer to that is probably yes, but can I be really totally open with you and, and explain that I don't understand what accountants do, but I'd love to learn from you. So he said, oh, why don't you come down? So I, I go down, and he literally tells me the standard accountant joke, which is, oh, you know, the debits are on the left and the, and the, <laughs> and the credits are on the right. And so I took a look at what he was doing, and um, at the time we had this thing called the 9800, which was a, uh, you know, like a programmable computer thing, and, uh, you know, Wang was there in those days and stuff. And so I go, oh, this looks pretty simple. So I said, oh, well, of course it would need some software, and, but based on what you've shown me, I think it'd be really, really cool. Uh, and he says, oh, well, that's good. I said, well, Brian, that's going to take a little while, and I'm going to need permission to do that. So would, would you be able to commit to me that if I, when I finish that thing, if I show it to you and you love it, you will buy it? He said, of course, because based on what you said. So I go back to the then uh, general manager's name is John Warmington, and I say, John, um, I got an interesting experience this morning, uh, or interesting experience this past week. And he said, what's that? I said, well, based on a survey that I've just done, 100% of the accountants would bring <laughs> Seriously, I actually said that. And he used to say to me, done, you age me every day. Anyway, <laughs> what then happened was uh, I wrote the software, and it was in basic, you know, and the storage device. You wrote the software? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, it was you because know, I could write in basic, yeah, of course. And um, it was, uh, you know, the storage device was an audio. Can you believe that? The storage device was an audio cassette and everything else. And we used to go, boo, to find it. Anyway, and the output device was a facet typewriter, not even an IBM thing. It was a facet typewriter. And uh, so anyway, so I take it down, lug it up the stairs because it was pretty heavy, particularly the typewriter, and Capon sees it. And he goes, oh, that's really good. I'll order one of those. So, so he orders that. So I go back to Warmington and I say, I think this is a magnificent opportunity for Hewlett Packard. So why don't we run some seminars? And he said, well, yeah, okay, go and run some seminars. So I run this seminar. It's so funny. And there's 30 accountants in the room. And at the time, we just replaced this, uh, this clickety clickety click uh, typewriter. 
uh, with a the world's first thermal uh, scroll printer. So it was the wide thing called, uh, called I forget what it was called, the 9816 or something. Anyway, so I'm in this room, there's an aisle down the middle, and there's 15 accountants this side and 15 accountants this side, and I cannot wait to show them. Oh, and by the way, the thing had like, the first one had function keys, so you had F1, F2, and you could program these function keys. And so I'd program them, and F1, I remember, said trial balance, and you know, F2 said something else and everything else. I just couldn't wait to show them this printer because it was silent and they'd never seen anything like it. So I go, oh, you're welcome, welcome, welcome. And I remember one guy, one guy, this is a typical account, they were sitting there and he had his, his, his uh, pants up kind of thing, and you could see the garter. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> seriously, you could see the garter. So anyway, so get the picture. So I press the button on trial balance, and the printer goes, Psss and I flip it to break the page and then you know, psss, off you go to go, go, oh my god and so I pass these two tr they're both the same page right so I pass this one over here to the right hand side and then to the one over here and I, I keep going and as I'm keeping going the guy on the right hand my right hand he's coughing he's going <coughs> And my first response is to take him a glass of water. See, and he says, no, I'm okay. So, but, and then he keeps, <coughs> is there some problem? And he says, yes, there is. And I'm thinking he's going to talk about a health problem. And he says, uh, so I said, what's the problem? He says, it's this trial balance. And <laughs> I probably shouldn't be saying this publicly, but I'm going to say it. So he said, I said, well, what's wrong with it? He says, it doesn't. And, and I say, it doesn't what? <laughs> and he says, it doesn't balance. And I say, so I didn't even know it's funny. I say, well, that's okay, because it's only a trial. And of course, <laughs> <laughs> seriously, I said that. And then the whole room, you know, erupts kind of thing. And amazingly, people bought this thing. And then a couple of days afterwards, uh, David Hartley, who I was, uh, uh, was a customer of mine in Brisbane, uh, David came down and, and he was literally on on his pants because um, he'd been investing a lot in trying to do things for consulting engineers and he said so Paul what have you been doing and I said oh, I've got this program and <laughs> it, it had a name by the way I, oh the name was Happy. I can't believe it was uh, no it was ANCS A-A-N-C-S the Australian Accountants Number Crunching System can you believe that yeah. So anyway, so David is, you know, literally out of sort of financially at that time. And I said, uh, well, why don't you have this? And so I gave it to him and knowing that, you know, he, the guy's a genius. And so then we created uh, what was one of Australia's first computer companies, which was Hartley Computer. And uh, I discovered about this time last year, oh, you're going to be so pleased to hear this, that I am actually in the Australian Computer Museum. Seriously, I'm there. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. And the funny thing is, the funny thing is that um, uh, Vipul, who's upstairs, right? Uh, I'm, I'm doing a session uh, in the United Kingdom uh, next you know, two weeks from now. And uh, he said, oh, Paul, you'll love it. And I said, oh, really? Why? He said, well, the venue is really great. And I said, what's the venue? And he said... <laughs> <laughs> he said, it's the British Museum. And I said, oh, God, they might keep me in overnight as, <laughs> as an attraction. So anyway, so that's a sort of a long-winded story to say that if you, um, you know, I, I, I really did get lucky. And, I, and I, 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 you know, as a result of the Hartley experience, I then created, um, you know, a thing called Results Corporation. And we ended up having 23,000 uh, small to medium scale businesses that we were doing all the marketing for and then that segued into the accountants boot camp and stuff like that so you know my life has been one of uh, extraordinary uh, extraordinary luck but also at the same time extraordinary um, curiosity I, I, I like the story of Zig Ziglar um, and as you know, I announced the other day that I was 29,000 days old, right, three days ago. I didn't announce, but it just sort of came out. And um, so I'm fascinated by this age thing. And Zig Ziglar, you know, the, the great speaker, yes, he was yes. 83 at the time, and someone said to him, so Zig, you know, you're getting on, uh, so don't you think it's about time to slow down? And Zig looked at him, he said, he said, no, I figured out that I've got less time to go than you, so I think I should speed up. Mm. And that's kind of like where, 
where I am and, and um, really taking time to, um, you know, continue to be curious about all of the things that are happening. You know, we just did a session, as you know, on AI. And I mean, that just, that absolutely blows my mind in terms of, in terms of what's possible. We, you know, we could, just like we could never imagine that we would be on phones doing things, you know, we, we're going to have exactly that experience now. How we navigate through that experience is going to be really interesting to see. But what I do know is that if we, or when we perhaps, not if, when we approach that correctly and look at how it gives us more space to be human, yes, that really is a good thing. Yeah, so circling all the way back to the, the, the human element of it. And uh, for people listening in, um, I, I know I've gone and listened to a lot of Zig Ziglar podcasts, very um, <laughs> um, um, fun and informative podcasts. I think his wife was Barbara. He's always yes, referring yes, yes, to was, yeah. <laughs> always referring to her in yeah. the podcast which is always quite amusing um yeah so so um, um the, the the great thing is is um like yourself uh, a lot of his thoughts are out there in the in the world and you can sort of tap into them and listen to them well, well the, worth exactly and that's why what you're doing is so valuable right it really is so valuable um i, I you know and and it, it, i mean you you are really getting a lot of people through your skills to tell their story, and as a result of that, that's changing up other people's stories. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so it's a, uh, that's why I said right up front, it's a privilege to be here with you. Yeah, no, I, I really appreciate it. And sometimes you, um, <laughs> I'll, my accountancy world is full of KPIs and benchmarks, but sometimes through a podcast, you will never know who you impacted or how you impacted Correct. and you have to be okay with that and i am okay with that and yeah. i bumped into a lady in the supermarket last week and she's like oh listen to your podcast <laughs> <laughs> i recognize your hair color i love it then and, and and it's not that she loves it but it's she says that she said to me um uh, she's looking at moving back into the industry and she now thinks there's a lot more exciting stuff out there and, oh. and that's right Oh, has there ever been, I mean, we, has there ever been a more fascinating time with, uh, you know, we, we talked yesterday uh, about this lady who, uh, well, we didn't mention her name, but there's a lady um, in Silicon Valley uh, whose name is Tamsin Woolley Barker, hard <laughs> name to forget. Um, and she, she has a, a really interesting story in as much as she was an impoverished researcher and here she is studying termites, people, you know, things that have been around for longer than us and, and bees and all that kind of stuff. And so what's the connection to tech? So here she is and she's studying these termites and she's trying to figure out how do these zillions of termites, how do they know exactly what to do? How do they know, how do they know to build the air conditioning in? What's the management structure, ah, interesting question, that they use or the leadership structure, if you will, to you know achieve this thing and so a couple of really nasty things happen in her life her son dies her, her famous photographer husband leaves her and so she decides that she's going to publish this this work and she writes a blog which is called teeming spelled t-e-e-m-i-n-g and it talks about you know the termites and zillions of zillions of people and how do they organize and so someone in google says oh we don't have zillions, but we, we have a few hundred thousand. So maybe that what she talks about would be very useful for us. And she's now the number one sort of game changing, uh, you know, consultant, if you will, uh, or trainer in Silicon Valley. And Vern Harnish, who I just mentioned upstairs, right, with the scale up and all that kind of stuff. He was, uh, and I know, know Vern, and, and he was interviewing her. And sadly, this line is not in the book. By the way, only buy the book if you're interested in bees, termites, and everything else. <laughs> but the blog is, goes further. So he's interviewing her, and he says, what's, what's the most important lesson that you've learned through your research? And she, right off the bat, she doesn't have to think about it. She says, oh, it's this. She says, nature does not solve for problems. Nature always solves for potential 
And if you think about that, that's so interesting because if you think about, you know, the tech space and how we sell things and all that kind of stuff, I mean, typically what we do is we have discovery calls, right? Those sorts of things. And so a discovery call essentially is, so tell me your problems. Oh, I understand the problems. I've got a solution and it's this much. But imagine that you could change that conversation, which of course you can. And instead of talking about the problems that you're going to solve, why don't we start talking about the potential that we unlock? And when you start talking about the potential that we unlock, it's an entirely different conversation. Yeah. And by the way, when you're hiring people, why don't you ask the same question? Why don't, why don't you say that in your firm, in your startup company, whatever it is, uh, we, we, we are all about the potential of human beings. So, so, and, and that's how we hire. We, we don't hire based on where you've been. We hire based on where you will go. So talk to us about how you see your potential in this company. Again, yeah. it's an entirely different conversation. Yeah, I, that's so, um, so um, crystallizing for me. I um, recently spoke to um, um, a uh, Zero staff member. As you know, many of them have been made redundant. And I said to her, I've been avoiding speaking with you mm. because I'm a problem solver. Uh -huh. And I can't right solve this problem for you, and I'm a problem solver, and I have thought through everything, and I can't solve this for you. But then, and I won't mention what it was, but I said, how about we get together and do this project? I can't solve your problem, and I can't get you income in there, and I can't get you a full-time job, but let's work on this project together. But it was a potential. And surprisingly, she's come back and said, yes. And, yep. and, and uh, yeah, the, the, the potential thing. And I think that uh, you could almost draw a line in the sand of the accountants and the bookkeepers can, can, can solve problems to a certain extent, but then the potential can actually pull the whole, oh. the whole water, the flow, the goals across. That's very exciting. Yeah, it, it totally can. And, 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 uh, that, uh, and the other interesting thing about about potential, I think, I think, I mean, I'm learning this as well, right? But, uh, so I don't, don't think I've necessarily got the answer, but there's lots of questions around it. But I think that the, the moment you talk about unlocking potential, you are talking about the human experience. Mm. That's what you're talking about, yeah. right? And so once again, you, you, you get back to what we were talking about earlier on, that, you know, tech is really an enabler to create better, more fulfilling human experiences, yeah. right? And and I think that's um, you know that is exciting when when we have that view of it, yeah. Because when we have that view of it, it will change fundamentally the way in which we, you know, the the, the way in which we design interfaces, the way in which it will just fundamentally change it. Really will. Look, I was going to ask you what are the top three things accountants and bookkeepers should be doing, but I think that what you've just said, um, unlocking potential, uh, will just be so impactful for them that I'm not. I'm, I'm, I'm going to. Oh, we, we, dish that that, no, question. that's good. No, I, 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 I like that. Aside, <laughs> aside from the fact that that it stops me thinking, but there is there is one thing I, I would like to add. I, I and I'm adding this. By the way, thank you for. <laughs> Uh, being here, um, no, it's it, you know, it's what an incredible you know time, and and um, you being here has actually reminded me of, of something that um, I, I didn't say yesterday that I feel the need to say now, um, and it's this, you know, yesterday or even now we we we're talking about potential, and essentially that gets down to vision, you know, where do you see things, and all of that kind of stuff. And a friend of mine said this to me not that long ago, and it's a, probably a good way to kind of put a little bow on mm. what we've been uh, chatting about here. And again, thank you for it. And and the, the friend said this. He said, and by, by the way, if you're running a tech company, this is a pretty good thing to think about, right? So he said, when your vision becomes more powerful than your memory, your future becomes more powerful than your past, mm -hmm. right? And, and that's all about this whole thing again. It wraps into potential. So, yeah. and at this event, and 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 sort of in my world, I am uh, engaged with a lot of the um, um, original people who were impacted by Rod Drury's vision, yeah. um, and and. Um, and, and, and it's so nice to sort of be around those types of people. Um, and, and, and 
the, the tech wasn't there, but the vision was. There you go. Yeah. There you go. And, yeah. and people will say, you know, I bought in three years before the tech did what any any type of thing, but yeah. but the vision was there, and I bought in, paid for the vision. And I think, by the way, you know, when you when you think of the various uh, various. You know, in, in, when you think of, for example, in the zero space and, you know, the intuits and, you know, all of that sort of thing, I think there is still an opportunity for them to, to do, to, to could I say, could I say it this way, to, to okay, the, in the tech space, before layoffs and that kind of stuff, we, you know, people were well rewarded, mm. right? And and hopefully they continue so to be. But one of the things I've noticed, and I'm sure you've noticed it as well, is that here we were, you know, rewarding the entrepreneurs and and, and, and so on. And and yet what I've seen is is an explosion of people moving away from the larger companies, you know, to do their own thing. And that's, that's, you know, there's been a veritable explosion in that. And I think that one of the reasons that happens, and we talked about it actually yesterday, um, was one of the reasons that happens is I, I sometimes think that this happens, that the people who are well rewarded, I'm talking well rewarded financially, sometimes they, I think, based on my time with a few of them they put their head on the pillow and 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 they go is that all there is 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 that all there is that i you know i turn up i get well paid is that all there is and and then what they do is they is, is they look for that opportunity to do their own thing and increasingly what we see is that people in that space like the shoes we're wearing for example <laughs> karyuma say oh we we need to introduce something different with these shoes. So as you and I know, when you when you buy those shoes, two trees get planted. That's really cool. That's really really cool. And that's not about them saying, you know, we support some kind of charity somewhere or wherever it is. It's it's kind of like a when this then this, right? So wouldn't it be interesting if we we thought say about uh, you know about zero and or whoever else it is, and, and where we could think about the, or let, let's take um, ignition as a case mm. in point. Yes. You know, every time someone wins a, a, a job, you know, bang, this happens. And I think there's a, there's a really interesting opportunity for the larger companies amongst mm -hmm. us to grab that space yeah. and, and be able to say, no, 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 this is not some sort of charity thing that we do, but this this is like a, this is like a meaning thing, mm. like, like um, you know, think about Canva as, mm. as a, for example. Now, we know the whole Canva story, but wouldn't it be interesting instead of saying, you know, we've got a, a foundation which has, you know, got $1.2 billion in it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Wouldn't it be more interesting to say, by the way, every time you create a this, Somebody who cannot see gets the gift of sight. Wow. Wouldn't yeah. that be interesting? Yeah. And it changes the dynamic. Do you see what I mean? So it, 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 it creates engagement and, 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 by the way, it unlocks potential in someone else just yeah. because you've, you've had the privilege of yeah. being able to use that tech yeah. that way. Yeah. And uh, you're seeing the story. Um, you're, you're seeing the story unfold. <laughs> Exactly, you are. Exactly, you are, and you're creating. Exactly, that's a great way of saying it. You're you're creating even better stories, you know, for th those people who uh, are in need uh, through no fault of their own, uh, you know. And and uh, yeah, it's a it's a <laughs> it's a very interesting way of thinking, uh, uh, you know, about what we can do. And yeah. and um, it's it's a very different sort of space than thinking about it as like a charity thing because you know that's like donate 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 well no let's why don't we do that slightly differently and just go no we can link what we do to really significant events yeah right uh, in people's lives so yeah excellent <laughs> excellent so i'm so excited to be here at the accountants boot camp with the legendary paul dunn <laughs> what's what's one thought or something that, that's come out of the boot camp so far for you oh well one that i just mentioned i think you were in the room at the yeah. time when when 
someone said, um, and you know, someone well known, in, 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 relatively well known in, in the profession, and certainly someone who uses, you know, Wayne, as in Wayne Schmidt, um, isn't Wayne interesting and in what Wayne's doing, right? And, and uh, by the way, he is uh, Wayne and Sal are uh, kind of guardians of, uh, you talked about legend, and I uh, thank mm -hmm. you for that, that thing, but they are guardians of the legends that we're creating yeah, as well. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Wayne is an extraordinarily good oh, friend of mine, and, and, and Sally oh, is an angel. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, and all their pictures of the things, and, and it's just great. It brings me so much joy. <laughs> that, that, there you go. It, 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 yeah, it, it, exactly right. And and so th this this opportunity to um, uh, to do things is just incredible. But anyway, someone said, who and Wayne happens to consult to this person. <laughs> So uh, he said, someone asked him the question you just asked me, which was, so what have you got so far? And he said, what I've got. Now, people would look at this guy and say, oh, wow, he's doing it really well. You know, look at what he's doing. He's, you know, he's not taking on any more clients because, you know, they're going, what do And they're doing, an eight, you know, and they happen to have made in B1G1 13.5 million impacts, for goodness sake. So they're doing okay, right? And, and so this guy, Peter, says, when asked, what's the thing you've got on... So in other words, what I'm trying to say is, by every measure, you would say, this guy is successful. By every measure, you'd say it. So, Peter, what's the big thing you've got, you know, from day one? This is just day one. And he says, I think I should be bolder. And, and I don't know how many words that is. I think I should be, anyway, five or six words. And I think those five or six words are, are really, are really interesting words come to think of it. I haven't, thank you for the question, by the way, because I haven't thought of it this way before, that that's probably a message to all of us to to be bolder mm. in in our execution to, of things to be bolder in terms of the reach of things that we do and to be bolder in terms of being able to unlock the potential that not just we have but the potential that our users then have or our members then have to do great things and we can be that example of being bolder and I think especially in this time frame of coming out of what I'm sort of calling the bruising of the last few years. There's one heck of a bruising. Where we hermited because we needed to and then um, um, coming out of that, stretching our legs, coming in contact with people, being bolder. And, and, and I'll throw in there I've just been um, binging <laughs> um, Sekinda Singh Cassidy, who's the new CEO yeah. of Zero, yeah. um, she wrote a book on Choose Possibility, which is about taking calculated bold risks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. which kind of wraps up into that. Well, exactly. And by the way, as you well know, people are looking and saying, why are you doing that? What, you know, what, what are you doing that for? Um, and that, what that means, by the way, is, is when, you, when you're bold, it, it, it may not work out. Yeah. I mean, it seriously may not work out. Yeah. But, but at least you're trying, you know, at yeah. least you're trying, at least you're saying we exist to, to create that, that difference that, uh, in, in, in some way. And if we can create that difference as not being about us, but, uh, but it's about being bigger than us, yeah. then that automatically creates more attraction and it creates more people who are creating even better stories. Yeah, and, and she talks about you can go through a door, but... You can come back through that door. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. exactly. So with that, thank you so much for joining me on the Cloud Stories podcast. I feel that we could uh, talk for, we for, could. for many hours, but you have a boot camp to get back to. And, and we could have a whole discussion on Karyuma, <laughs> couldn't we? Karyuma, just... and, and people want you back at that boot camp. Um, how can um, people get in contact with Oh, well, it's very, very simple. So you can obviously catch me on LinkedIn, uh, where I'm just simply Paul Dunn. Uh, or, of course, uh, you can, and people freak out when I do this, but just email me. You know, it's paul at b1g1.com. Uh, and that's, the, I need to be careful with this. So that's the letter B, followed by the number one, followed by the letter G, followed by the number one. Uh, because in England, for some reason, some people get that as biggie. No, it's not. It's b1g1.com. Uh, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Been great. I hope you like listening to that interview with Paul Dunn, Chief Storyteller at Clarity and co-founder of B1G1. 
What a privilege for me to have the opportunity to spend time with him and share it with you. If you did enjoy this episode, can I encourage you to share it with a friend or post about it on social media as that helps more people find out about the podcast. From here, I suggest you join the Zero Mastermind group on Facebook for advanced conversations around the ecosystem. Subscribe to the informative Accounts Apps newsletter, which gives you a great overview of the ecosystem space at heathersmithau.com. I also encourage you to connect with me on LinkedIn and subscribe to this podcast. I'm Heather Smith and you've been listening to the Cloud Stories Podcast.